Tesla and Elon Musk have managed to build an almost fanatical fan base that have taken on the company's advertising themselves. There are thousands of podcasts and YouTube videos examining the products from every conceivable angle, the design, the interface, the sustainability, the technology, and of course, the performance. I think the adulation is justified. Tesla cars have managed to bridge the gap between sustainability and sex appeal. But a big portion of their value actually lies in their advanced deep learning neural networks. The cars are constantly learning and being updated and improved. Their autonomous learning vehicles rely heavily on convolutional neural networks or CNN to understand lane markings, drivable space, traffic lights, pedestrians, signs, and of course, other drivers and cars. I released a video on the various types of artificial intelligence, machine learning, and deep learning if you haven't watched it, I'll link it up here. Tesla vehicles currently have eight surround cameras, two rearward looking side cameras, one rear view camera, two forward looking side cameras, one wide forward camera, one main forward camera, and one narrow forward camera. Together, they provide 360 degrees of visibility around the car at up to 250 meters of range. The onboard computer runs on unsupervised learning algorithms that detects objects, their distances, and labels data in photos and videos without the need for humans, which saves a lot of time and money. In addition to these cameras, the cars also use a forward-facing radar, an acronym for radio detection and ranging. Radar measures distances of objects from a particular point by sending out an electromagnetic signal with an antenna. When the signal hits an object, it is reflected back to the car. In this way, we can determine its location, range, angle, or velocity. The resulting data creates a bird's eye view point cloud of the entire area surrounding the car, the road layout, the infrastructure, and physical objects. Basically, a 3D scan of the area around the Tesla. The cameras work in the visible part of the electromagnetic spectrum, with a wavelength of 380 to 740 nanometers. Radar, on the other hand, uses long wavelength microwaves, which are in the invisible part of the spectrum. The radar comes in handy during dust storms or foggy days when the eight cameras cannot capture enough information. Microwaves can penetrate through the fog because of their longer wavelength. The information received from the cameras and the radar sensors work together to create an understandable picture of the environment around the car. For example, in this video, the circles indicate the location of surrounding cars thanks to their radar sensors. The rectangles or cuboids indicate the size and types of cars thanks to the cameras. Information from the two coincide to create a complete picture. Tesla's fleet of around a million vehicles gives it a huge advantage over its competitors like Waymo. Theoretical algorithms are a great start, but learning from practical applications and real-life experience helps to refine these CNN algorithms. Tesla's engineers are constantly training the cars in shadow mode using all the data that the cars send back, the inaccuracies, the successes, the new data identification, etc. Anytime a Tesla makes an incorrect prediction about a car or a pedestrian, the Tesla can save the data snapshot to later upload and add to the Tesla's training set. When these updates have been tested and reviewed thoroughly, they are moved out of shadow mode and into the data engine, and all the cars in the fleet receive the updates. This constant influx of data from the cars provides a large, varied, and real data set which are essential to refining the neural network. While a human brain can understand shadows and reflections and recognize that a road will look different during the day versus at night, a computer cannot unless it is fed a variety of images at various times of the day. Tesla's advanced deep learning convolutional neural networks should be an inspiration to all other sectors of the economy. They have invested heavily into their intelligent data engines and it has paid off. Of course, they aren't the first to create autonomous self-driving vehicles, but they questioned the use of LiDAR in previous models and came up with a more efficient, cheaper, and future-proof method. The construction industry in particular needs to learn from this precedent as it slowly moves into automation.
I made a video on Built Robotics excavation robot a while back. This autonomous vehicle is the closest thing to Tesla's that the construction industry has right now. However, it runs on LiDAR rather than radar, which may be appropriate for this application. It doesn't need to run on neural networks because the robot is operating in a confined space without variables like pedestrians and cyclists. The machine doesn't need to be as precise as a self-driving car because there isn't any danger of colliding with humans. In fact, it needs to collide with the dirt to do its job. Another possible application of convolutional neural networks in the construction field is monitoring worker behavior to identify potentially unsafe habits. This data can inform training and education priorities in the future or even prevent accidents in real time. Health and safety is a major concern on job sites. Human life is obviously very precious, but another reason is that paying for work-related injuries can be very damaging to a company's finances. The data pulled from on-site monitoring can also improve efficiency and productivity. Finally, Japan's Advanced Industrial Science and Technology Institute has built a humanoid robot that can handle a variety of construction tasks. This will come in handy when there's a staffing shortage or serious hazards on site. This robot has inbuilt environment and object detection sensors, which allows it to move around and install drywall, for instance. Japan's falling birth rate and increased life expectancy is going to create both a shortage of skilled labor and a shortage of housing. Employing deep learning robots may be necessary to supplement workers on job sites. If you have any other ideas of how machine learning and deep learning could impact the construction industry, let me know of them in the comments below. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching. See ya.